Hi everyone, in today's quick tip video I'm going to show you how you can break a stitch file apart if you want to adjust it or add something extra into it. So I'm going to be using Embrilliance Essentials. I've already opened up just a, a, a blank stitch frame. This is just set to my 8x12 hoop. It doesn't matter what size hoop I'm using for this but obviously you just need to make sure that your hoop size is right for your design and obviously is right for your sewing or embroidery machine. So I'm going to come up to the top of the page and I'm going to come to the yellow folder where it says open. I'm then just going to navigate to where I've got an embroidery file saved. So for this particular stitch file I'm going to be using the 6x6 and I now use a Brother V5LE machine, so I would need to choose the PES format from this folder. If you use a Janome or a Husqvarna, you just choose whichever stitch file you want to have a look at. I'm going to choose that and I'm going to say open. Now it's brought it in lengthways, so the first thing I'm going to do is drag an imaginary box around it and I'm going to rotate it to the left just so that it's in the right orientation and it's easier for me to work on. You can see over in the properties panel over on the right hand side yours may come in like this just with the name you may have an arrow you may have a plus it depends on whether you're using Windows or a Mac whatever little icon you have here if you click that it will then bring down all the stitch steps for that file so if I click on step one it highlights the words farm if i click on step two it highlights the animal step three are these little bits around it and step four is this pink section with the words fresh and this is one of the elements that i wanted to change when i stitched out this file so at the moment these two sections in pink are a group if you like. I can, with them selected, I can come up to the top of the screen and I can come to edit and try ungroup and see what happens. So I think basically what it's just done now is just broken the whole design into groups. But I've still got this element here that's in pink that is connected and I want to create a duplicate of this section at the top and I also want to move it up because I think it's too close to the letters. So I can try ungrouping it again with it selected and see what happens, but it's still gonna be a group from what I can see because the colors are exactly the same. So if I just undo that and put it back. So what you need to do to break these two pink elements apart, you need to go to the stitch simulator so you come up to the top where you've got the needle and thread and I know that the two elements that I'm looking at are in pink so I know I need to be over here. So I can advance this arrow by dragging it along until I get into the pink. If I just take it back a step you'll see here while I'm still in the grey this is nearly at the last stitches. I can, I can advance forward by using the arrow to the right up here and it will just keep advancing through the stitches until it gets into the pink and then you can see it jumped from there to here and it's now in the pink. So what I want to do, I want to break it when it's done this scroll section before it goes down to the bottom here. So I'm going to wind it on using the arrow at the top on the pink section and let it do its stitching and look, you can see there now where it's jumped to the next stitch down here. And I don't want it to do that. I want to break it apart. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this little left hand arrow that says back. And I'm going to keep hitting that until that crosshair jumps to the last stitch of the top section here. And that's there. So... I need to put a stop in here now. So to break this section apart from the words, with it here before, it, if I advance it forward one stitch, you'll see it jumps down here and that's not what I want because I don't want 
this to be, I, I still might stitch it in the same colour, but I want it to be broken apart so I can create a copy of this. So I'm going to take it back one until I get back up here. And then what you do is you press this stop button. And when you press that stop button, it will bring up your colour selection and you can choose any colour you want. It doesn't matter. I would probably just try and choose a colour that's not already within your design at this point, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to choose, say, this brown and say OK. So now when I come up to this section here, I can move this now independently. It's no longer attached to this word. And the word fresh that was in the pink, the same as this, has now gone to brown, which is the colour I've just chosen. So straight away, I can now select this and move it down out of the way. I can bring this back and position it so there's a bit of a gap above the words because before I felt it was too close. And now if I right click and make a copy and then right click and paste, it will paste a duplicate directly on top. I can now drag the duplicate down and I can put that underneath and I can rotate this if I want to turn it the opposite way. So if I deselect the stitch simulator, I can now select this one I've just made a copy of and I can rotate it so that it's opposite to the one above. And then if I still want to have my word fresh in this same colour, I can click on the colour and I can see that it's Brother Deep Rose. So I can select the words, click on the colour swatch and under name, I can type Deep Rose and hit go and it highlights it here and I can select it and say okay. So the three elements will all stitch out in the same colour if that's what you want but I've been able to split the top swirl from the word, create a copy, rotate it and just give me a little bit more dimension to the design which I personally think looks better. So that's how you can split up a stitch file that you've you know got for free or purchased off the internet and you know you want to modify it and then if you want to change the colors all your colors are here now for all your steps and it's just a case of you know if you if you don't want your animal in green you can click on it and change the color swatch or there's not that many colors in this particular design now so it may be that, you know, you just want to line your colours up when you get to your machine and you know that once you get to each element of the stitch out, you'll just load your machine with your particular colour. And if I come over here now, you'll see that it's um, put all the colours together. So step four is the top swirl, step five is the words, and step six is the other one. And if again, if you want to reorganize these, if I want to bring the swirl before the words fresh, if I just left click and drag, I've now got the top swirl, the bottom swirl, and then it will do the words. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter. They're all going to be stitched in the same color, but um, you know, it just depends whether you want them stitching in that particular order. Now, what I would do, because you've altered the original stitch file, I would come to the top of the page and choose File, and I would choose Save Stitch File As, and then I would rename it. So whatever it's called in here, it's called Farm Fresh, and it was 6x6 six six Pez. I would call it Farm fresh dash amended dot PES and save. And because I had my folder open, it saved it into my original folder. So there's my original file, farm fresh six by six PES. And here is farm fresh amended PES. So I know I've always got the original that's untouched and I've now created a copy. 
So I could just put this onto a USB stick, load this into my sewing machine, and then just let it stitch out. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. I am trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. I don't know if it will happen, but if you do follow my channel and you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It will just help me get my YouTube channel um, pushed out to more people that might be searching for this kind of video. Anyway, thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.